We've got a big look at Overwatch in this month's edition of Blocks Magazine. Let's check it out. Okay, so we are going to get right into this month's issue. We've got a, man, this looks really interesting to me. We'll get to an article about this stuff a little bit later. Let's plug right away. We've got letters. This, I thought this was a really interesting picture here where a guy is using you know, some of the most recent modular buildings along with some you know, 80s, 90s city sets. Just kind of doing a, a conglomeration here in his city and it looks really cool. Well populated city there. We've got some information here about the Ford Mustang. Really awesome set that just came out. And, um, and then this is just kind of a little peek at some of the new products from uh, the uh, Toy Fair in New York. And this is like a, a dinosaur mech that's coming soon. And I really am excited about it because it's got these sort of lime green pieces with like these dark red kind of jagged pieces. I don't know if they're stickers or they're printed, but they remind me a lot of the Jurassic Park Ford Explorers from the original movie. And so I think those pieces are going to be uh, really handy coming up for, for Jurassic Park mocks. We've got some information here about Andrew Clark, the fan designer of the Flintstones Ideas set. I think that's a pretty fun looking set. Here's some stuff about the hidden side, a, a new line coming from Lego where you know kids can play with the sets or have sort of like this augmented reality through their mobile devices version of the sets. Um, I actually was just recently talking to Neek Van Slagmat, uh, who design was one of the designers on this. Um, school bus and he was really excited uh, you know to be able to share this design with people um let's see we're moving forward <clears throat> we've got some q a here uh, with one of the designers on the ford mustang we're moving into the diaries daniel tries to look at you know over the product history to find was there a year where the product line really was like the greatest year of, of a product line ever. Um, we've got Steve here talking about, uh, you know, finding Lego, you know, built like plants out in the wild. This is fun stuff. This one's cool because it's like actual Lego stuff built sort of mixed in with actual plants. We've got Graham here talking about, you know, all these anniversaries we've had. We've had just, you know, last year, the 60th anniversary of the Lego brick, the 40th anniversary of the minifigure. Now we're on the 20th anniversary of Star Wars. And there's just a lot of anniversary stuff, so you can hear what Graham has to say about that here. This, I really think is cool. You know, it didn't even occur to me how many sort of like spooky, quote unquote, themes and sets have come through Lego over the years. Uh, but this is a top 10 look at uh, times Lego went spooky. Uh, of course, my favorite on this would be, well, this one from Fright Nights definitely reminds me of when I was a kid. I had this dragon and this guy. In fact, I think these were the only things I had from Fright Nights, so I actually must have had this little box here that's pictured, the 6007. Um, that's, so that reminds me of my childhood, but... Of course, the Monster Fighters Haunted House. Man, such an iconic thing. Uh, I would love to be able to build that, perhaps own it on a shelf someday. We're moving forward. The Curse of the Missing Piece. This is kind of a funny image with a bunch of little Emmets here freaking out about a piece missing. Um, but this, yeah, is just about, you know, how likely is it that you're going to get a Lego set that has a missing piece? You know, I've built a lot of Lego sets over the years and I've never had a missing piece. I have had, well, I, I guess I, sh I should take that back. I've never had a missing piece that I couldn't just like go to my parts library and like replace that. That might've happened once or twice. So I just don't like remember having a missing piece being a big deal. I can imagine for people who don't have parts libraries at home, you know, if you actually have to order the, the, 
the piece from Lego product support and then wait for it, that would really put a damper on your build experience. But one time I did have a pretty major piece malformed from the factory when I opened a Lego set. It was uh, my copy of Benny's Spaceship, Spaceship, Spaceship! And one of the three large wheel hubs that kind of make up the back boosters on the thing was just like the center where the Technic axle goes through was just malformed so you couldn't you couldn't put it on or it, I think it was one of the Technic pins that engages the rest of the build there and so I, I couldn't put it on so I couldn't finish that build I had to order it from Lego they sent it of course for free but it took a little while uh, that's what this article is about um, interesting thing I don't feel like it happens all that often at least in my experience, but I know people do experience that. Okay, then we get into some Overwatch reviews. I will show my age here and say that I know basically nothing about Overwatch, um, but I think these sets look cool. These mechs, I have so many friends that are so into mechs. So when I saw this, I was like, hey, I mean, that looks pretty cool. And the color scheme, pretty fly. Okay, uh, I also really like this thing. This is a Watchpoint Gibraltar. This is like sort of a futuristic space shuttle looking thing. And I really appreciate space, both kind of fantastical and more realistic. Um, and I think this is sort of somewhere in between. Uh, so this is really cool. Moving on, we got Corner Garage here. I did a review of the Corner Garage here on Beyond the Brick a couple months ago. So you can look for that video if you'd like to or Read about it here in Blocks Magazine. We've got the Flintstones Ideas set. I love ideas. I like this Flintstones set. Um, let's see, they give it a 59 out of 100. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people talking about their issues with this set. Uh, it's not one that I'm like clamoring to go get. You know, I think like, oh, let's say the Steamboat Willie. I've already got that, I've reviewed it, but if I, if that were on the shelf, I would like drive to the Lego store nearest me and get it today. Like that, that's one I really love. This, I'll probably have it someday because I love Lego ideas, but I'm not like super interested in getting it ASAP. Okay, here we've got the review chart. This is all of the reviews that have taken place in past issues. And then we get into an article called Consolidating Lego Clubs. Uh, this, of course, you know, if you see an article in Blocks Magazine with a bunch of images from old Lego publications, it's going to be from Daniel Konstansky. That's really his jam. Um, it reminds me of my childhood. Here we've got an article about him just sort of talking about like all these, these different publications and sort of the clubs that, you know, went along with them and over the years how those things fluxed and changed and combined and whatnot disappeared came back that kind of stuff okay then back issues that's fine what's this nothing important all right uh lego family tree government services we've been looking at the lego family trees for many months now this is cool stuff this oh i had that set this um truck that opened up and had like a command center in it oh it's right here look at this oh cool man that really brings back some memories okay we're moving on this you know a lot of this stuff Reminds me of you know my childhood these kind of images. I really like the look of this fire boat um, And then some of this, you know, this is a little bit later Well, this this might have been from when I was a kid a lot of this stuff reminds me of when I was a kid I like it, but you know, of course this stuff Continues today. We've still got police. We've still got fire Departments, you know and as new generations of kids come up You've got the kids that want to play with those things, and so Lego's always going to be able to make, you know, a little bit new, newer sort of um, renditions of the stuff they've been doing all along because uh, that's what kids want. All right, uh, so here we've added the government services family tree to the last couple of family trees here. It'll be fun. I, th I still think someday we need in blocks some sort of overview of all the family trees. I hope that's coming. I don't know. It seems like so far we're just like still kicking out the new family trees, but all right, let me know guys what's coming. All right, here we go. Moving along. All right, Sea Lug, Seattle, 
not far from Portland. I have a lot of cool friends in this group. They're doing a lot of cool stuff up there. We have a lot of fun up here in the Northwest in the United States of America. Uh, good stuff here from Sea Lug. Read about them in this issue of Blocks. From Bits to Bricks, we've seen a couple articles about building in the digital space here. And this is, you know, a little more about building on the computer, doing your renders, and then actually building with the real bricks. And uh, you can see they're working with uh, Studio or Stud.io here from Bricklink, and just how incredibly amazing the renders that come straight out of that software are right here. Uh, these can take a long time, especially if you you know want to go with the highest qualities, the photorealistic, and when you've got these big transparent pieces, those can take quite a while to render, but as you can see in the end, the result is just marvelous. Okay, got a little look at the LEGO Movie Maker here, and I think it includes kind of some tips you can see from, you know, like camera placement and doing some different stuff with your Movie Maker set. And, uh, you know, some other kind of like variations on that thing. Ideas Showcase. This is, looks really interesting to me. It's Sunset Streetcar. It includes the power-up motor uh, and battery. I think this is neat. This is good stuff. Um, you know, so here's where, you know, it's built with only seats. Here's where it's built, you know, including the motor. Or maybe, the, you know, one is one of the streetcars has all the seating. One of the streetcars has the motor in it. We've also got a couple of Home Alone, the McAllister house. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I love that movie. And then we've got this little antique globe here. Moving on, we've got uh, some instructions here about animal anatomy. I really like this camel. I think he's uh, funny looking. And then uh, a focus on the Lego piece, the Ninjago blade. And this animal has a couple horns that are made out of that. I think that's a kind of a neat look. Lots of different ways to use that element. Then we've got some uh, mock Q&As here. I like this little buggy. We've used some of these elements in pretty interesting ways. Keep moving on. And, uh, oh, look at this. This is like a Tim Burton Batmobile in what looks like, man, that's really small. That's like barely wider than six studs, maybe? Maybe that's seven or eight studs wide, but that's a... I mean, for a Batmobile, it's pretty small scale, and they've done a pretty excellent job at, you know, nailing the aesthetic of this particular Batmobile of history. Okay, here we've got a 787-800 Dreamliner. Man, that thing looks massive. Awesome. You can actually, look, in business class, you can actually sit, you know, one person on each side of each aisle. That's fun. Okay, we got some events. <laughs> Blocks Brictionary, as usual. We've got some uh, architectural assets. This is just some detailed information about the architecture sets that have been released over the years. Oh, man, look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, man. Oh, okay, here. This is the end. Now, of course, in May, may the force be with you. Uh, we've got a lot of information coming up next month about Star Wars, and I couldn't be more excited for this Star Wars stuff in May, but that wraps it up for April in Blocks Magazine. If you want to know more about this, you can check it out at BlocksMag.com. And if you want to see great LEGO videos every day right here on YouTube, please subscribe to Beyond the Brick. Until next time, thanks for watching.